Hello, I'm Mary. I'm a volunteer at Salisbury Museum and I'm going to show you first of all how to make a nature crown and hopefully they're all things that you've got at home or you can find in your garden. To make the headband for your crown, take a sheet of newspaper and just fold it once, fold it again and fold it again and to keep it together you can use sellotape or you can do what I'm doing which is just a few staples. The easiest way to make your nature crown is to find some really nice leaves in your garden or when you go out for a walk and again you can use double-sided tape, you can use staples or sellotape and just put them onto your crown and you can wear it for a picnic in the garden or when you go out for a walk in the park. Lots and lots of leaves, all different sizes, shapes and there's your nature crown. But if you want your crown to keep, because the leaves will fade, sorry, if you want your crown to keep, you'll need to make some permanent leaves. The easiest way to do this is to make a paint pad and use your leaves to print onto a piece of paper. And when they're dry, just cut them out. And then when it's dry, cut it out. And there's one I made earlier. And just stick or staple them onto your crown. And again, you've got a really nice nature crown. If you want to be even more creative, you can draw your own leaves or use the ones that you've printed and perhaps put some other things on. There's a little frog face there. He's quite easy to make. You can stick on googly eyes or draw his eyes. You could make a butterfly, just a piece of cardboard, maybe a cereal box or a picture that you find in a magazine. If you haven't got paint, you can always stick on something from the cupboard. You can stick on ground coffee or you could stick on some dried herbs, anything you like really to make your nature crown. Now you know how to make prints, we can make some little animals and creatures using our fingers. If you want to make a fingerprint, you can make a paint pad with some kitchen roll like we did before and just dab your finger on it and then onto the paper to make a print. That was a bit messy. Or you can paint your finger and dab it on the paper. And when you've made some prints, you can use a felt tip pen and turn them into other things. Here we've got a little bird, a flower, a butterfly, a snail, a beetle, a rabbit, I don't know what he is, a nice long squiggly caterpillar, there's a flying bird, that's a sheep like the one outside the museum at the moment. There's a tiny mouse and a cat and a giraffe but I think you can think of lots of other things to do with your fingerprints too. You can make one big picture with your fingerprints. 
I made a snail with lots of different colours of my paint pad, just dabbing onto the pad, back onto the page, onto the pad, onto the page. And there's my snail. There are some butterflies amongst the flowers. Or I went back to the leaves and made a leaf print picture with lots of different leaves out of the garden. Yep, there's the leaf print. There's the butterflies in the garden among the flowers. There's the snail. And so that you can see what to make, there are lots of little fingerprint creatures. If you can find some nice stones in your garden, or if you go to the beach, you can pick up some pebbles, nice smooth ones are best. You could make yourself some pebble pets. If they're white stones, you can colour them with felt tips. We've got a strange creature there, but there's a ladybird. You can make some legs and put onto your stone to turn it into something else. There's a little spider. He hasn't got his eyes yet, but you could stick on some eyes. And here, is the shape that you need to make for their legs. That's the spider's legs with eight legs. That's a leg for a fly or a ladybird with just six legs. And can you see I've put two stones stuck together with bits of double-sided tape. I've stuck on some eyes. I've made some cardboard wings and when we stick him together, you've got a really nice little moth. So depending on what your stone looks like and what colour it is, you can make pebble pets. This is Soctopus. He's an octopus made out of an old sock. And he's blowing in the wind just as if he's swimming in the sea. If you want to make Soctopus, you must ask Mum for an old sock that you're not going to wear anymore. And then stuff your sock with newspaper or the other sock if you want to. And tie him tightly and then you need to use your scissors to cut up the leg of your sock so that you've got eight little legs or tentacles really they are. Use double-sided tape to stick some eyes on and you can get mum or dad to thread a needle through so that you can hang him up, thread through some string. To make him look as if he's swimming in the sea, you need to make some nice waves and weeds. To make those nice curly shapes, you need to take a circle of card or paper and just cut all the way round you don't really even need the lines because they don't have to be very accurate. And can you see that already it's becoming really curly? And you've got some waves. If you use a big circle, you'll have longer waves. If you use thinner card, there'll be floppier waves. You can tie them or stick them 
onto your piece of stick and hang your Soctopus up. This is Coffee the Hedgehog. I made coffee one day when I didn't have any brown paint. So I took a teaspoon of instant coffee and just a few drops of water and mixed it together to make some brown paint. Then I drew a triangle shape for his head and coloured in his nose and his eyes. Then I used the coffee paint to paint his face. Then I took a piece of stick out of the garden and it's got quite a bumpy end, a rough end. And I used that to paint his bristles. So the hedgehog spines were all painted with a stick. And then I gave him some little feet as well. And the thing is, when Coffee the Hedgehog is dry, he smells absolutely lovely. <laughs> this is a pecking bird made out of a paper plate. If you take a paper plate and just fold it in half, and then cut some pieces of tissue or material or just paper and staple them onto his end to make a tail and then cut some shapes and stick on for the wings. Then you need to cut out a little comb at the top and a triangle beak and give him some eyes. You can stick this whole lot with staples or with glue and when you put him down give him a little tap. Oh he's fallen over. Give him a little tap and he should become a little pecking chicken.